This Black History Month, we're honoring Dr. Patricia Bath, an ophthalmologist who began her career in New York City. Dr. Bath developed a method of laser cataract surgery that's helped patients worldwide. She was the first African-American woman doctor to receive a medical patent. She died in 2019. We're taking a look back now at the history of scientific misconduct, which has led to African-American mistrust of the medical community. These feelings are having a crucial impact in the fight against the coronavirus. CBS 2's Andrea Klein-Thomas explains. Going home. We met 60-year-old Felicia King in Harlem. Despite her underlying health conditions, when it's her turn, she has no plans of getting the COVID vaccine. The White House in a, has been so chaotic in the last term. Who's to believe anything that they say? She's not alone. Data shows African Americans in the city and beyond are the least likely to get the vaccine. I don't trust it. And going back to history, way back, look what they did to the men in Tuskegee. The 1932 Tuskegee study, where for 40 years the federal government withheld treatment to hundreds of black men who had syphilis to study its long term effects. It caused suffering and, in some cases, death. How do you feel about being used as a guinea pig? <laughs> I thought once we were pretty rough. And in the 1950s, a Baltimore doctor biopsied the cancer cells of Henrietta Lacks without consent. Researchers continued to use the cells for decades without compensating her family. I think all of that needs to be acknowledged and actually can't be trivialized because I think our communities have had to deal with the medical profession with some amount of skepticism that was protective. Medical misconduct that fueled mistrust. But then I would also say that this isn't the moment that we're in now. The development of COVID vaccines are different in many ways. Trials were conducted on thousands of willing volunteers from different backgrounds. Dr. Kazmikia Corbett, a black woman, is the lead scientist that developed the Moderna vaccine. The vaccine teaches the body how to fend off a virus because it teaches the body how to look for the virus. And medical professionals were first in line for the shots. So we have someone from our own community who's developing these vaccines for our community, which needs it the most. And I am encouraging you, first of all, if you have access to the vaccine, receive it. Black churches like Abyssinian Baptist in Harlem are now vaccination sites and are part of a strategy to build trust. And you go up to the armory and they say uh, that people from out of town, predominantly white, coming to get the vaccine. Well, why? Because it works. And his biggest fear that more will die in our community senselessly, needlessly. But the hardest hit communities are where vaccine hesitancy is the highest. We currently do take every encounter that we have as a precious moment to gain a patient's trust, but also to gain the trust of that person's network. A traumatic history haunting the present when so much is at stake. Andrea Klein-Thomas, CBS 2 News. Some firefighters of color in Passaic County, New Jersey, are breaking barriers and bridging gaps. CBS 2's Lisa Rosner says their commitment is not only to the front lines, but to their community's confidence and pride. <laughs> Without hesitation, firefighters Roshan Davis and Janice Miller gear up for whatever the emergency. They've both been a part of the Patterson Fire Department for around 15 years. Today, they are part of the roughly 20% of firefighters of color that make up the Patterson Fire Department, a number that has slowly climbed from 1980 when Larry Franklin joined and was just one of four black firefighters. It was daunting in the fact that it was in a city of Patterson where the population was approximately 180,000 people. And, and of those 180,000 people, 85% were people of color. Shortly after, a consent decree meant the city needed to hire more minorities to reflect the population. But Franklin said most minorities were afraid of the risks of firefighting. He eventually became the city's first black fire captain, something he prepared for with the help of nearby chapters of the International Association of Black Professional Firefighters. His mentor, the department's first black firefighter, Henry Harris, spearheaded forming the local chapter known today as the bronze heat. 
I tell people all the time, this is the second best job in the world. When you find the first best, let me know. It's important for us to allow our community to see that there are uh, you know, other members in the community that are like them. The goal for the Bronze Heat is to show members in the community that they aren't just here to fight fires, but also they're here as helpers. <laughs> From escorting Santa to deliver free holiday toys to kids, to hosting a free seafood cookout, to beautifying a park honoring Martin Luther King Jr.'s historic visit to Patterson. Whether they need encouragement on education, whether it's a personal issues, you know, we're, we're here for you. Plaques honoring Franklin and Harris are right at the front of their home fire trucks. It's their strength that prompted the bronze heat to come together and make the community around them even stronger. In Patterson, New Jersey, Lisa Rosner, CBS 2 News. Tonight we have a look at African American Greek life. What's known as the Divine Nine on college campuses, there's a new spotlight on them since the election of Vice President Harris. But so, I mean, what is the Divine Nine? And how are these black fraternities and sororities different from all the others? CBS 2's Elise Finch, a proud sorority member herself, explains. From the outside looking in, black Greek life might look like one big party. And most people will tell you it is a lot of fun. There are four African-American sororities and five fraternities that make up the National Panhellenic Council, together known as the Divine Nine. Each has their own colors, meaningful symbols, unique hand gestures, and even calls that you'll hear during social events. But black Greek life is also a serious matter because these organizations share a commitment to academic achievement and uplifting the black community. African American fraternities and sororities are just as integral of the black community as the black church. Lawrence C. Ross is a member of Alpha Phi Alpha fraternity and also the author who coined the phrase the divine nine for one of his books. They're working together to kind of to basically go into society and to in some ways prove that one is a first class citizen in, con in contrast to what America is saying to the black community. So who are the members of the Divine Nine? Alpha Phi Alpha Fraternity Incorporated. Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority Incorporated. Kappa Alpha Psi Fraternity Incorporated. Omega Psi Phi Fraternity Incorporated. Delta Sigma Theta. Sorority Incorporated. Phi Beta Sigma Fraternity Incorporated. Zeta Phi Beta Sorority Incorporated. Sigma Gamma Rho Sorority Incorporated. Iota Phi Theta Fraternity Incorporated. Each of the organizations exists in part to bolster African-American college students while they're on campus, academically and socially. Basically, I just love what I saw. I love the sisterhood. I love how they supported each other. Even if you only had one friend, that one true friend can get you through anything, and that's what we are to each other. But they're also devoted to serving their communities, and it's not just a collegiate endeavor. Mary Bentley Lamar is the North Atlantic Regional Director of Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority, Incorporated. Many Greek organizations are started in college, and once your college years are over, you are pretty much finished with your activity with that organization. Whereas in the Divine Nine, we commit to service, sisterhood, brotherhood in the case of fraternities for a lifetime. Both undergraduate and alumni members of all the groups routinely collect and distribute food, clothing, and other necessities. Voter registration drives and fundraisers to provide scholarships are cornerstones. So are leadership and mentoring programs for young people. Valerie Hollingsworth Baker is the international president of Zeta Phi Beta Sorority Incorporated. And we have so many members who are lawyers and doctors and, and aerospace engineers and they're able to steer you in the direction of where you may want to go and when you're thinking about a career in life. Most of my teachers were Delta. And they always seemed to be, you know, women who were extremely brilliant, well-spoken, and just about uplifting the community. I was influenced by somebody when I got to college. She was my mentor. Um, we had the same major, the same interests. She was just everything I wanted to be. And for her to be an SG row, I said, okay, like, I want to be an SG hero too. For some people, black Greek life is literally a family affair. That's the case for my mother, sister, niece, and me. 
We are all members of Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority Incorporated. My mother joined 57 years ago. I know that it was a lifelong commitment. I knew that I would be active, had no idea how active, and wasn't sure what my children would do or my grandchild would do, so I am amazed. African Americans still face unique challenges on college campuses and in our communities. So the Divine Nine is as necessary today as it was more than a century ago when most of the organizations were founded. Elise Finch, CBS 2 News. All right, Finch family, setting the pace for generations to come. We have this story remembering the long distance runner who blazed the trail for countless others. And we'll tune in for an immersive history lesson to whirl and to dance till the white day is dark. The musically based interactive project exploring the history of African Americans in New York City.